I'm a longtime Unitarian Universalist, and I learned the bulk of my UU history in the late 1990s and early 2000s. When I took this job, I was lucky enough to take a class about Unitarian Universalist history. And do you know what I discovered? Our Unitarian Universalist story is not complete at all. People were left out because they didn't live near Boston. They maybe were not a famous writer, maybe because of their race, maybe because of their gender. And so I've come across somebody who had a great deal of influence in Unitarianism near where I grew up. And I want to share her story with you today. And I hope her story will make the story of Unitarian Universalism more complete for everyone. The person whose story I'd like you to hear today is named Fanny Barrier Williams. And this is based on the work from Gail Forsyth Vale and Jemaine Kripe. Frances Barrier, or Fanny as she was known, was furious. She was embarrassed and hurt and disgusted. She had discovered that no matter how talented, educated, and polite she was, her race made her a second-class citizen. In Washington, D.C., where she was a teacher in the 1870s, she had decided to take a painting class. But she discovered that her art instructor had erected screens to separate her from the other enrollees in the class who were white. Thinking things would be better in the North, she enrolled in a music school in Boston. The principal there told her that she had to leave the school because some white students were threatening to quit if they had to go to school with a black person. Fanny was born to Anthony and Harriet Barrier in a mostly white town outside of Rochester, New York called Brockport in 1855. The family of five was one of the very few black, black families in the community. They were well respected. Aspiring to become a teacher, Barrier was the first African American to graduate from the Brockport State Normal School, now SUNY Brockport in 1870. Fanny had a lot of gifts. She was a talented painter and pianist, a good student, and she had a wide circle of friends. She felt accepted and a social equal to the white people in town. It was only when she set out to do something large and out of the ordinary in her life that she smacked right up against a system that said she was of less value than white people. But it was also when she bumped up against this, this system that she found her greatest gifts and then used them to help people whose lives were more difficult than her own. Fanny Barrier met and married Samuel Williams, a, long, a, a young lawyer. They moved to Chicago, where they lived on the south side in a predominantly black part of town. She made friends with many people, black and white, who were interested in the arts, music, and discussions about all sorts of interesting things. She worked hard to help those in her community, especially Black women who, because of prejudice, were unable to find jobs and support their families. Because she had so many white friends, she decided to persuade some of them to offer jobs to skilled Black women. She soon discovered that just because a white person was kind to her as an individual, did not mean they would give black women a chance to prove themselves as workers. One manager, when Williams asked him to hire black women, went on and on about his, how his parents raised him to know that slavery was wrong. But when she pressed him to offer black women jobs, he said, no, it would be too disruptive to his business. When she reminded him that his Christian faith called him to do better, he disagreed. During her years in Chicago, Fanny Barrier Williams met and became friends with Jenkin Lloyd Jones, the minister of the Unitarian Church of All Souls. She joined the church and was active in the establishment of the Abraham Lincoln Center as the city of Chicago prepared to host the 1893 World's Fair. Jones, Williams' minister, organized a world parliament of religions. This would be a gathering where people from all over the world could learn about one another's religions. Fanny Barrier discovered that there were no women of color on the planning team, and she pushed hard to fix that. Eventually, she was invited to not only be part of the organizing team, but also to speak at the gathering. 
In her moving speech, Religious Duty to the Negro, she demanded that churches do a better job of practicing what they preached when it came to justice for black people. Because of this powerful speech, Fanny Barrier Williams became famous. Soon, she was invited to deliver her message everywhere. She became a paid speaker, sometimes pairing her speeches with a piano concert. Recognizing the lack of services available to women, Fanny helped found the National League of Colored Women in 1893 and its successor, the National Association of Colored Women in 1896. When she became aware of the lack of African-American physicians and nurses in hospitals, she, be, she helped to create Provident Hospital in 1891, an interracial medical facility. Fanny was instrumental in cr the creation of the Frederick Douglass Center in 18, excuse me, in 1905 with Unitarian Minister Reverend Celia Parker Woolley in the Phyllis Wheatley Home for Girls. The latter became the part of a national movement and a hospital and settlement house still serve the Chicago community today. Fanny Barrier Williams passed away on March 4, 1944 in her home of Brockport, New York. She never forget the black women whose paths were even more difficult than hers. All her life, she fought racism that kept black people from the jobs and education they needed to survive so they could offer their talents to the world. We honor her memory and her place among our UU ancestors. <laughs>